Decision science tells us that it, decision making and happens across both sides of the brain, and I want Christine Liu to, to confirm on this. Um, you know, and yet we talk about science using only one half of the brain, right? The logic linear data side. But when it comes to the things that matter most and the decisions that we make, we are missing opportunities on the other side. The anecdotes, the emotions, the memory that go into true decision making. And for us at IC Change, we are doing that with regards to the lived experience of extreme weather and climate. Um, we mix stories and data. I myself am a mix. I wouldn't have exist if my parents hadn't boldly decided to color outside of the lines. I am half Sri Lankan Catholic, half Russian Jewish. Um, they didn't let me write shrewish in, in the box on the SAT. And so drawing boxes that separate art and science, expert and citizen, anecdote and data, local and global impact don't feel natural. And that's because they're not. If we reflect on humanity and how we've historically guided ourselves, the biblical and religious texts, um, we, 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 these are collectively authored, multidisciplinary pieces of wisdom. Um, this is the Madrid Codex. Um, in my previous life as a archeologist and anthropologist, I spent two years studying this document. It's a, it's a divination text with multiple authors that documents planting, drought, rain cycles. It has astronomical tables that were more accurate than Kepler's. And it is done so alongside history, stories, birth calendars, in order to better understand our relationship to nature and what might influence the future. In the year 2012, and I promise I did not make my decision to coincide with the Mayan long count. I was a climate science reporter with over 15 years of experience covering natural disasters all over the world. Uh, I was living in DC and I decided to move to rural Colorado to understand climate change decision making as part of a public radio, public media initiative. Farmers and ranchers told me they didn't believe in climate change. Half of them worked for Bill Koch. Um, but they said if it was happening, they would see it in their parents' journals, right? And so these things are little stories mixed with weather data, and they read like tweets from the Dust Bowl. They're incredible, and they are decision-making tools. Um, people still use these to make decisions on their farms and ranches. Oh, wait, oh sorry. I'm trying to see my notes. I don't need them. <laughs> Point is, they taught me that if you engage this conversation in their lived local experience, you can show them, not tell them, about climate change in real time. And with that in mind, I want you to meet Destiny Bell in New Orleans. Residents like her have seen traditional data and science fail to account for the block-by-block -block granularity, data accessibility, and community context in flood modeling, planning, and adaptation. And that makes the solutions that are proposed by cities, scientists, engineers, and insurers difficult to evaluate for viability and cost-effectiveness. They're less effective and less trusted spaces. I see change. Um, is, has a unique approach to community-sourced knowledge. And it begins with individuals and grows into communities co-investigating their changing environment and co-designing solutions with civic leaders. I see change channels the natural power. And I say that with having removed the word empower out of all of my presentation materials, right? Residents have natural power. We're just channeling it. I see change channels the power of residents like Destiny to share her flood story via her phone or computer, which we sync to local weather and local sensor data. She can also add her own hyper-local data, like rain intensity, flood duration. Today was a pretty rainy day here in Rhode Island, right? And as we gather stories from her and her neighbors, we are co-creating a community flood record. 
And unlike emergency-only applications, I see change is tracking patterns in sync with communities over time. We can verify the storm-by-storm -storm differences that make resilience solutions more targeted and cost-effective. For example, that pink dot is Destiny's Corner. Her neighbors also flagged it as a hot spot that impedes public transit, trash pickup. It's keeping children from playing in their yard. Oh my gosh. It wasn't initially included in the city's proposed green infrastructure solutions, um, but uh, when they saw IC change data and stories, they, they, they put it directly into design proposals for the community. Um, data alone is not our only value. IC Change is an iterative engagement tool, and we increase education through participation, and we also increase public trust through dialogue, right? That's true communication, it's two-way. Engineering firms and public utilities are using us to, um, in, in infrastructure proposals that put community voice and needs front and center. City departments are partnering with us uh, to increase risk awareness and actually lower the cost of community ins flood insurance. And teachers who are using IC Change tell us their students are improving both their STEM and their literacy skills. Collaborative storytelling is adaptation. When we see trends in community posts, we report back on how the observations tie together and relate to what climate scientists are seeing in bigger picture trends and research. And often our community is contributing new insights and in climate change impacts and policies. Um, for example, um, our community was one of the first to report about uh, the Pacific blobs uh, that were upending marine ecosystems. Um, this ended up being the front cover of National Geographic a year later, and our community was reporting it in real time, right? Um, we also had um, people telling us about um, green algae uh, killing marine life in South Louisiana. And when we reported this out, we realized, you know, Louisiana is the only state in the Gulf Coast that doesn't monitor harmful algae blooms. Kind of a problem, right? When our state hosts the biggest dead zone. Um, I see change is built to be nimble and open. Uh, we openly ask people what they're seeing change, and they give us a place to start. So uh, we can monitor a range of climate stresses. We've had I see changers tell us uh, and give us early reports of, of record-breaking wildfires and droughts in Colorado, and they've modeled hard-to-detect indoor heat waves with sensors in Harlem. We're creating new communication paradigms that can lead to more equity for residents and planning and evaluating community solutions together. And I'm going to go ahead and point out, um, this is our modeled heat wave. Um, this data that the community worked with us to produce, uh, we, we proved that indoor heat waves are, are dangerous four days before the National Weather Service is, declares it and up to a week after. Because in public housing, we are not allowed to have an AC without a, paying a lot of money. Uh, that, those buildings are trapping heat, right? We published this story on WNYC in live time because we had a media partnership. And then two years later, we published it in the American Meteorological Society Bulletin, right? It just came out like last month. Right? So being open about our results the whole time, um, also partnering with a local community group to, get, um, to work with residents collaboratively and equitably. For, re for journalists like myself, partnering with a local community group is like taboo. It's like the third rail, right? And this is just breaking it down. What are we all after? Information, right? If we start collaboratively trying to achieve that goal, we can break down a lot of our silos. Um, so we want a national murrow. We published professionally, but when we got the community back together to discuss the results, only a fraction of those people who had participated could show up because we had a meeting on a Saturday, a, right? A four-hour meeting on a Saturday. Are we being inclusive? Are we being equitable? I got kids. I got kids. I got jobs. I got stuff to do on the weekends. So most of the ways that we do engagement really taxes people's time and isn't truly equitable. Um, so we started uh, adapting our approach when we started working in New Orleans at, for um, increasing ed equity and doing meaningful engagement. Uh, we used comment boxes to, be, to engage beyond traditional audiences. Again, the communities we want to reach who are most at risk for climate extremes are not on Twitter. They're not commenting on the newspaper blogs, right? So we go to places where there's wait times. We have these comment boxes. Um, we started using public art. Um, we did a, a live storytelling event. Um, and uh, we, this is our, our, our pop-up block party. 
Uh, it was an art exhibit that we co-curated with a local soul food restaurant owner. He's in the left there. And let me just tell you, this guy has a better Instagram following than anyone could ever want. It's amazing. But he works seven days a week for 12 hours often, running his business. So we had to go behind the counter, put hair nets on, let him listen to the audio, show him the pictures that we wanted to curate, and have him react while he cooked. Okay? Um, the pop-up block party, he catered it. So it was art partnered with a local business, and I got a shout out to my friend who was uh, doing his presentation in the morning. Um, and we not only collaborated with him in you know, discussing how to present, but how, I mean, and we not only co collaborated with residents on data and stories, but like, how do you want to see this played back to your community or communicated? Um, it was honoring uh, local leadership as well as honoring this neighborhood by looking at its relationship to floodplains and history, as well as engaging our residents about what we want to do to solve these flooding problems. Um, we have a global community, uh, so from New Orleans to Kenya to Kerala, there are thousands of IC changers engaging all around the world, uh, documenting local impacts and connecting to bigger tr picture trends. Um, and we are trying to seed an international neighbor to neighbor movement. Um, that can provide the local context, the downscaled data, and the public trust needed to empower communities in climate change decision making. Climate change is bigger than any one discipline, and that's why we are saying we need, and we have the luxury and the crucible of being outside of academia and saying we all need to get together and get to work. So um, if you are interested, please get in touch. Uh, try us out. We, are, we have an IC Change Tracker on iPhone or Android, and uh, you can always find me at, at julia at icchange.org.